Hello and welcome back to another part in the Mario Kart 8 custom track tutorial series. Uh, this should be a very brief episode about cleaning up a couple of things, but most notably we're going to talk about how to make dual-sided faces in Wii U and Switch, uh, such as this plane of water here. We're also going to talk a little bit about the start grid, uh, and we're starting in Blender to discuss the start grid. Um, now, I believe I said near the very beginning of this episode, or of this series that you should leave the start grid here, but just hide it. Just hide it. And now, today is finally the day in which we need to use it um, because this start grid isn't like just for sizing reference. This is literally perfectly lined up with the start grid in actual Mario Kart 8. Um, so, what we need to do here is uh, we just need to basically use this as the basis for our actual start grid model. Uh, so, I'm just going to unhide it here. And depending on the track, because I tend to use references from the existing Mario Kart 8 tracks, you may need to select all the faces and use E to extrude them up just a little bit. You may need to uh, do some inset faces first, something like this, and then move them up with G to make them a little 3D. Uh, however, I'm not going to do any of that for right now because, as it turns out, uh, the ones from Mario Kart Stadium as far as I can tell, they are literally just 2D objects. And the only thing I need to do is hit G, Z, and then hold Shift and move it up ever so slightly. Just like that. Just enough so that's above the road. But not so high above the road that we're actually going to be able to tell in-game that it's hovering above the road. Uh, if I zoom out, you might see a little bit of what's known as Z fighting, where you can kind of see the road through it. Um, but the closer I get, that shouldn't be visible in game. The closer I get, you can kind of see they're all normal. Uh, but now we've already adjusted that, so I'm just going to hit A here uh, in edit mode to select all the faces here. Now for Mario Kart Stadium, actually, um, the texture that is used for the start is actually the same as the trick ramp or because i've never renamed it <laughs> the trick tramp um and oh my god uh so as luck would have it i did not plan this ahead of time um the uv mapping for this is like literally exactly where it needs to be on here almost like if i move this that's the star grid right there so really i just need to make some minor adjustments uh, I think I, uh, I'm pretty sure that means that this is literally how, uh, this model was originally created. Keep in mind, I didn't originally make the model for the start grid, so this is a su pleasant surprise to me that this is already mapped. Uh, you may actually have to do a little bit more mapping. Uh, I am gonna, however, disable snapping here and move this just a little bit up. Uh, but yeah, um, that's already UV mapped. I wasn't expecting that. And so just like that, we have our start grid uh, in the model. But because this uses the same material as the trick ramp, I am going to first of all select start grid, hold shift. In op this is in object mode, by the way. And then I'm going to click on the trick ramp. And I'm going to hit control and J at the same time to join them into one object. And there we go. We now have a start grid for our map. Um, now, if the start grid is raised a little more off the ground, if you were kind of like what I said, if you extrude them up, depending on if what type of start grid you have or what material, you may need to do something with the KCL. Like, say the start grid is made of a different material than the surrounding road, you may want to put a little, like, little wood slats. Uh, so you may need to do something with the KCL. I I'm not going to do anything here because it's all just road. Um, but yeah, that should cover that. 
Almost, actually. Let me double check something here. Uh, let me actually open the track in Track Studio, which I'm going to need to do here soon in a little bit. Because uh, the one problem, it's been a long time uh, since I started this series, but I will say the one problem with that start grid object is by default it actually starts mirrored to how Mario Kart 8 likes start grids. It's not a problem because you can technically uh, mirror it in Track Studio. There's ways around it, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, but let me just see if that is the case here. I don't remember if I unmirrored it yet. Okay, yeah. So basically what I'm talking about is you see here, the start grid object. The starting is on the right. In our actual track model here, it is on the left. Now, technically, the easiest way that I could handle that is edit this, go in edit mode, select all of the start grid, just hit S for scale, and then Y, and just scale it along the Y axis, and say negative one. Now, when I do that, if I go into face orientation, all those faces are backwards now. So I can just UV, uh, go into mesh, normals, flip, and they're flipped. So that's what I'm going to do right here. However, there actually is a way to flip, if it'll let me click on it, the start grid in here. Um, but I need, where is it? I think it's up here. Yes. Uh, so. If you did not want to edit that model and you did want the start grid to start on the left, all you have to do is click on the BML object and then where it says is first left. Uh, actually, I just now realized that text is reversed. Uh, you want to check is first left if, for is, if first is on the right and you want to uncheck it if first is on the left, which is kind of dumb. Um, but uh, because I've reversed it in the model, I'm going to leave that checked, which is what it does by default. But if you want the first to start on the left, you just uncheck it and then it reverses. So yeah, it's up to you. Depends on how you want that. Uh, I've just reversed it in the model, so I'm gonna leave that checked. Um, but yeah, so that'll tackle the start grid here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and Select everything because we're actually done here in Blender. Do the typical export stuff. Course model, uh, course model here. Okay, so that actually should copy that or should take care of that. Uh, over here, the model editor, I'm going to go ahead and just re-import the course model. Just realized that may have exported to the wrong... I exported that to the wrong folder, I just realized. Let's do that again. Take two. And I honestly don't even know where I exported that to. So... part 12. You may have noticed during this that sometimes my parts on here don't actually match the part that I'm working on. It's because I'm lazy and I just keep incrementing it, even though I've used the same folders multiple times for different parts at times. Uh, anyway, so that's exported. Um, this should not be the correct one that we want. And there you go. We now have a visible start grid. However, while that is visible in the model, if I go into map editor, the start grid itself is now in the incorrect spot. So let's just go ahead and click start here and move it so it's not. And if I just move it along here in the Y, right up to there, this is what I was talking about earlier. You can see that all we have to do is line up the object with 
the actual start grid in game and all of our characters will just naturally fall into the correct positions. Uh, so there you go. That tackles that. Um, yeah. So that tackles the start grid. Now there is one other thing I wanted to talk about. Um, and that is uh, two-sided faces. I don't remember if I talked about this in a previous episode. I felt like I did, and maybe I undid it at some point. But I've noticed that my model doesn't have that anymore. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix it now. Uh, if I already talked about this, I apologize. I should probably have reviewed that before I made this part. But whatever, I'll just tack it on to the end here again. Um, so here I have the Wii U version of the map. Um, this process is different between Wii U and Switch. So we're going to do Wii U first. Uh, but what I want to do here is I want to make it so that I can see the underside of the water when I'm underwater. So I just, in Wii U, I click on the object and I go into the material. And I go into, uh, where is it, render state. And here where it says calling back, I want to say calling none. And already in the editor, you can see that I can now look up at the water from underneath, uh, which is more or less what we want. Uh, it's probably going to be kind of blinding in-game, but that's just technically because I didn't really make the water the right size. Uh, but that should handle that in Wii U. That's all you need to do. Um, however, in Switch, it is a little bit of a different deal. Uh, just going to double-check that I save that. Double-check that I save this. Double check that I save this. Thank you. Um, uh, once again, because I did that in 200cc for Wii U, I'm going to do this on camera just to drill it in everyone's heads. This is why I honestly, this is why normally I don't do the 200cc thing until the very end. Uh, but I, as I kind of talked about in a previous episode, I kind of forgot that I wanted to do a couple of things before I did baking. So normally I wouldn't have done this till later. Uh, but I'm going to go in here, objects, just for 200cc, and delete it. And that should already take care of that. And that should be good. Okay. Um, so what I was going to say is now in Switch, I'm going to, I actually have two separate incident or two separate copies of Track Studio under my computer. Uh, one that's pointed at the Switch files, one that's pointed at the Wii U files, just to make my life a little easier. Now, technically, in a later episode, I'm going to talk about porting between the two. Technically, my starting grid is now in the wrong location on Wii U. That's fine for now. I'm Technically, you should only port at the very end of the process. I only did it now so that I could do stuff like this uh, as part of the tutorial. But I'm going to click on the water here. Now, if we go into Material... That menu that I used to set the coaling no longer exists. And what I need to do instead is go into render info on the material. And I'm actually going to maximize this. And I need to look for the correct setting on here, right here. Um, so there's a setting in here called GSYS underscore render, underscore face, underscore display, f underscore face. Going to delete the word from. Okay. So something I should know. <laughs> uh, I was going to bring this up if it ha uh, in like a haha -ha in case it happens. Uh, but it just happened. Be you will always want to save before you do anything with that setting. Because I have found the Track Studio loves, loves nothing more than to crash every single time I try and edit this setting. At least once. Okay, uh, so it's just going to crash every time I delete this setting this time. So let me try this again. I'm pretty sure I'm doing... So there's a specific way I need to do this. Right. 
So here's how you do it. You need to switch the word front to both. I was I, in my head that I needed to do one way and not the other, and I ended up mixing up the two. Do not delete the word front. Do not like do what I was doing earlier and click at the end of the word front and then hit backspace, 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 backspace. Because once there is no text in this field, Track Studio will crash every single time without fail. Instead, you must, when you are editing this setting, click and hold to select all of the text that is currently there and then begin typing whatever setting you want to change it to. That is why it was crashing earlier. That is why it is not now. But either way, we need to change this Jesus render state display face setting from front to both. And now it is switched. I will say I've kind of had weird luck with this reflecting in Track Studio. And I don't know if I've just set it up incorrectly for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, but it doesn't seem to want to display in Track Studio that I've actually set that. But it should actually be good. Let me just try reloading it and seeing if that will display it now. Yeah, so it's weird. When I update it the first time, it doesn't automatically update. Um, but if I reload here, we can see that it actually is rendering on both sides now. I don't know why it does that. It just seems, I don't know if my setup is just wrong for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. But yeah, I have a lot of weird crashing issues, and I have that specific issue. But that's how you do two-sided faces um, for... Uh, both Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and, and Wii U. Now, just your due diligence. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna test uh, Wii U. I'm just gonna test, or I'm not gonna test Switch. I'm just gonna test Wii U, just because I don't wanna. It's kind of pointless to just show both. Show it, it work the same thing working twice. Um, and I don't even have the start grid in the right position on Switch, anyways. Uh, but let me go ahead and just copy everything over. Or we you obviously in your case you would want to test both so the files are loaded let's boot up the game Okay. Uh, once again, I don't really... Uh, actually, I am going to go into Versus, because I want to see everyone lined up on the start grid. Let's just quickly get in here. Got to make sure it's 150cc. Technically, this will also test if I copied the 200cc one correctly, because I should be in the right position. And there you go. You can see everyone is lined up more or less where they should be on the start grid. You can see that the start grid is visible on our track. And we'll drive around here to the underwater portion. Try not to fall off. Probably made this road a little too narrow. But you can see that now we can look up through the water. Kind of sucks for this course because that turn kind of becomes blind, but obviously that's just something you'll have to take into consideration while making your own course. Thank you very much for watching. I believe the next episode will be the long-awaited disaster um, that is baking. Uh, so, see you next time.